In this video here, we're going to take a look at how we can use the X any labeling tool. So we're going to use Arnold bounding boxes. So instead of just traditional bounding boxes, which is very fixed and rigid, where we have either a square or a rectangle, we can actually have a rotation of our bounding box as well. And this tool here is really good to use for annotation, both even for bounding boxes in segmentation, but also are in bounding box. They also have some cool AI features, so it can like track with sand too throughout a video and also label your data set as well. But this video here, not a lot of tools, they cover RNA bounding boxes and with Autolytics, we can train RNA bounding boxes models with the Yo11 model, also the A model, but it's very awesome. You get a much better fitted bounding box around your object. This is very essential in a ton of computer vision applications and projects. But just jump straight into it here. We've gone into the GitHub repo here, X any labeling tool. You can get it down in the description, link to it there. So first of all, we need to set up the program. We need to run through it a few steps depending on what operating system you're on. And then we're going to open up the program and we will do the labeling. So here we can see an, an example of the UX, not the most modern, modern one, but it does the job. It does all labeling and so on. It has a bit of the same style as label in but it has a lot more features and can do RNA bounding boxes. We can also see here segment anything 2.1. It's pretty much this one here. You can see we have an interactive visual text prompting for generic vision task, where we can just prompt what we want to annotate in our images, tracking by HBB detection, tracking by opt RNA bounding boxes, tracking by post estimation, and also tracking by instant segmentation. So it's good for video annotation, image annotation, and all that. They have tons of different features covered. Sachi, update taking, base landmark taking, post estimation, MOT, and so on. But we can use it for labeling our data, and we can use all the data for training our models and use them in production. So if you scroll a bit further down, we can see we have the installation and quick start usage, and also if you want to use a custom model, these are all the examples that you can go through pretty much if you want to see how it works. For example, OBB. Or in the bounding boxes, we can see here we have the shortcuts for the usage. So you can go through the different guides here, really intuitive to use. Definitely go through these for the specific tools that you are using. Let's go back here again and let's go into the installation steps, installation and quick start. First of all, we need to set up an Anaconda environment. I'm just going to open up a new terminal. There we go. And then inside the terminal here, we can just create a new Conda environment. So you can just install Mina and Conda from here. If you don't already have that, it's very good for keeping different versions, dependencies and all that. So right now we can create it. I think I already have one created on my end. After it's done creating, we will just go ahead and activate the environment. Then we can do all the pip installations and so on. There we go, we can activate our environment and then we can, first of all, it all have GPU acceleration. So you can either use GPU or CPU. Right now I'm just on my MacBook, so we'll use CPU. Let's just run that. Next one, we have to clone the GitHub repo. I've already done that step, but it's basically just copy paste from here. Then we install the requirements file, but that will depend on what operating system that we are running on. So right now you just clone it and then we go down into the repo. So X any labeling, capital X, any labeling, there we go. We ls, and then we can see all the different requirements that text files. Right now on Mac OS, we will just install the development one. So let's grab this file, pip install dash r requirements dev text and we'll install all dependencies here that we need. This is also an example of how you can use it. So basically just in this way. If you use NVIDIA or if you use Linux, Windows and so on, make sure to take the exact same steps here. For Mac OS users, what I'm on, we need to install this step here as well. And then you can launch the app after. So install the step. And then we can launch it after. So this is basically just go in and run this one. Yes. You can also pick uninstall any labeling if you run into any errors and so on. 
export the Python path for the tool and then we can run any labeling dash app dash dot py. So let's run this one here. It should just take a second. There we go. We grab our export. There we go. And now we can go in and run the app. So while I was running the app here, it took some time and then I ran into this issue here. So there's some module API, which is not compatible with the different versions and also PyQ5. So I did a little trick, <laughs> just copy pasted this output here, threw it into Gemini, and then I got their output results out. So first of all, I just had to pip install PyQt5, PyQt5 zip, which is the one that gave me the error, and also the PyQt web engine. And then it basically just installed it with uh, Anaconda as well, and used the PyQt equal to five instead, and that's pretty much it. Now it was running correct. So I basically just ran those two commands as well, and then we can rerun the any labeling dash app, and it will open up our UI. So right now, let's just go in and find a data set that we can test out. I'll just go inside my download directory or my user directory. Have data sets from Autolytics. Have the Dota v1. We have some images. Let's just grab some validation images so we don't have too many images for now. But now we can actually go in over here to the left. We have our polygons, we have our bounding boxes, and then we have our rotated bounding boxes. So let's just grab this one. Let's draw around these trucks here that we want to detect. So if you, if you just draw a traditional bounding box, let's just call it truck. This is a traditional bounding box. Let's zoom in a bit more. So this is a traditional bounding box. It doesn't really fit the object well. It's overlapping with the other trucks as well and so on. If they're even closer, it's gonna be even worse. For example, this one here, if you draw a rectangle around that one, you can also use the short shortcut. So if you press O, it's gonna pull up the RNA bounding boxes. There we go, but you can see how much, it's actually like only half of the box which is covered by the act like truck. So what we can go in and do here now is basically just grab this one here. We had the shortcuts from the GitHub repo, from the guide tab. So if I press this one and I press set, it's basically gonna rotate it counterclockwise. If I press B, it's gonna rotate it clockwise by a larger margin. If I press X, it's gonna only be one the angle or like one degree and C is clockwise a small change. These are small changes. This is X, this is C, this is Z, this is V. So now we can fit our bounding boxes significantly better. I'll just rotate it correctly. There we go. Now we have a much better bounding box around our object. We press O. We draw our bounding box. It's a truck. There we go. Choose our objects. And now we're gonna rotate it counterclockwise. Have to adjust our bounding boxes. So again, if you have an option to use AI models for auto labeling, definitely make sure to use that as well, or these four like segmentation and so on. If you're only interested in RNA bounding boxes for detection, like this is a really good tool. This is very essential. You can see, you can see these bounding boxes are significantly better compared to this one on the right left side. Especially if you also want to detect the parking spaces here, you want to have a parking management system, detect if the parking spots are available or occupied, then it's so essential and it can be solved without having these RNA bounding boxes because where should you check if this spot here is act like occupied if it's overlapping by the other ones. So you basically just go through all of it here. You can then export your data set into the old format, train the RNA bounding box models that we already have. We have tons of videos covering the whole training pipeline, how you can set that up. You just need to take the data set from here, export it, throw it into a Google Colab notebook or wherever you want to train, run a few train commands with YOLO and you have your model. Hope you learned a ton of this video here, guys. Definitely go ahead and check out this labeling tool, depending on if you want to do instance segmentation, some AI auto annotations, or any binding boxes, augmentation you can use for anything. And then I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy labeling.